As hometowns go, ours is about average. It isn't a paradise, nor so depressed, really. It's just a typical American valley full of the usual complexity of people and patterns of living that make up an urban area of 300,000. We all know the good face of the Kanawha Valley. We see it every day. The chemical plants in the midtown, the suburbs and shopping centers, the gilded capital and the boulevard, the quiet river, the broad valley floor at St. Albans, and the close mountains at Shuey. The airport, the civic center, the schools, the churches, the clubs, the theaters. But a community is more intricate and subtle than that. Like any American valley, ours has some lesser faces, little corners of life that are hardly noticed in the daily hubbub. There is emptiness, perhaps bitterness for some, when the unequal occurrences of life have brought unwanted hardships. Some have raw poverty. Children are the greatest losers because they have no choice about their lives. They don't pick the homes into which they are born. They simply find themselves in a world, and if it has little to offer, they don't understand until years later. The very young, the very old, the ill, the handicapped, the troubled, the needy, all are part of life, and all need help from their stronger neighbors. Now, in a community such as ours, an industrial community, there will always be a certain amount of vice in one form or another. Let's take a tour of the city. On Donnelly Street, around the corner, used to house a nightclub, a famous flame club on Dryden Street. Court Street, a famous house of prostitution. Well, we've talked ever since I was a little boy about uh, some redoing the area known as the Triangle, the area between, really between Capitol Street and the Elk River. Well, it's hard to speak for everybody in Triangle, but like, a general thing is the, the road, an uh, interstate should not be coming through a city. It should be going around the city. My position has simply been over the years that I think that it should go through the city. As uh, I've explained, I think that Mayor, Mayor Dodson has, uh, has a particular feeling uh, that the interstate routing uh, was a good one, uh, that the Triangle Urban Renewal Plan uh, uh, was uh, for the benefit of the city. Uh, I happen to disagree with him. Uh, I certainly wouldn't want to label him as being a racist, uh, City Hall as being racist oriented. Whatever expenses are necessary to shift the highway are not going to increase the tax burden on our, our local people at all. Whereas if the highway is not shifted and we lose all this land in the city of Charleston, it certainly is going to affect our local taxes. Recently we talked with uh, Road Commissioner Ritchie. And so as a direct result of the letter which came to Commissioner Ritchie from the Bureau of public roads on July 10th, asking us to, for, uh, to discontinue all operation with regard to the demolition contracts. We simply indicated to the Bureau of Public Roads that we intended to pursue the demolition contract. We have uh, information that the road was rooted in conjunction with the water company. The water filtration plant is not wanted. Uh, the road isn't wanted. The governor can, by you know, an executive order, have the road rerouted, which has been done uh, earlier when uh, the road was uh, tentatively going through Kanawha City, but uh, it was rerouted. It's going to be rerouted to save hills around the uh, capital. It's going to be rerouted in Logan County, you know. And if he can look out for the poor little white farmers, he can look out for the poor little angry black people in the Triangle District, you know. Right on, brothers. Am I right? Right on, brothers. All right. Yeah, you know, things are happening. And I, I think that uh, Charleston will be the beneficiary of a revitalized urban renewal uh, program in the very near future. It displaces people. It disrupts their schools, their churches, and their lives. It usually leaves uh, large uh, areas of land vacant. Uh, this land does not have taxes. Uh, taxes aren't being paid on this land, and it usually requires large bond issues for its financing. You mentioned relocation. What are the problems in relocation? Well, there, there are no decent places for some 600 families to move to. Uh, there are no places near the downtown area where many of these people work.
I do not speak for the First Baptist Church. I do not speak for the West Virginia Council of Churches. I do not speak officially for OIC at the moment. But I'm here because I'm interested in getting at the core of this issue, and I believe housing is a very important problem here. I was in the city council meeting Monday night when a code was passed, and I, I'm of the opinion that the code, housing code that was passed is not adequate. It is not strong enough, not only for the well-being of people who are renters or the people who will be living in the houses, but I think a much more effective code could be passed, which would uh, uh, help the total uh, group involved, that is the owner as well as the renters also, because there's no point of having anybody living in rat infested in apartments or living conditions that do not come up to sanitary uh, requirements. I think mostly what they wanted done was for most of the people in this country to realize what really goes on, because I don't think people really know. So-called good people, the so-called silent majority, I don't think they really know or are aware of what goes on in this country. See, this is supposed to be a country that's founded on religion also. You are your brother's keeper, whether you want to be or not. We have the Bible held up today every day, every day of our lives. And then most people go off and make their living, and because they're living good and have no problems, they don't think about another person. Uh, we have uh, a couple of instances where the uh, state road have uh, some notice for people to move out, and I think they only give them about, well, a week or two. And with some of these people, they only make their own evil. Most of them are on, uh, you know, of a monthly check. And I think they only amount to about $64 a month, in which they pay about $30 a month in rent. And with the house they live in now, I think it's about seven tenants in the house, and they only have just one bathroom. I don't think there's any hot water to this whatsoever. And it's owned by the state road. And uh, I really think that uh, the state road is uh, really responsible for our relocation as well as the city. The residents of this community are tired now, and we're fed up with all of the promises that have been made and none being carried out. We're tired of the social problems that have been created in our community and no social reform program. We're tired of our homes being gutted while we're yet living in them and nowhere to run to but to the hills. We are tired of having to tell residents that money is available to relocate, houses to relocate in, and yet at the same time there is no money and no houses. We are tired of being moved about, our children suffering, not knowing where to go or what to do. Your police force has uh, come in for a lot of praise uh, for their restraint. Were there any uh, special orders given out before the... Uh triangle situation not on. not not anything particular any more than our regular training that we use what force is necessary and we restrain ourselves and do the job and with as little damage to ourselves and other people than we can that doesn't mean that we're going to stand up and get killed or get knocked in the head we're going to protect ourselves the city police are down in this area well at the present time uh we would say uh it, it is fine but there are several police officers who have had quite a few complaints and we have discussed it with Mayor Dawson. You're demanding uh, the firing of Mr. Hemphill, the resignation of the entire authority, a halt the demolition, then you say you'll do whatever is necessary to achieve those demands. What do you mean by that? Well, what we really mean, that we mean any means that's uh, legally, any means that, uh, that is at our disposal in order to stop it and to bring uh, uh, attention uh, to the fact that uh, they're not dealing with the residents as they ought to. Are you saying it could be a, another hot summer in the Triangle such as one? Yes, I am. Before? Yes, I am. But we will not drop. We will go on with our plans for the boycott of the downtown businesses. Well, we intend to hope that they don't come down here to demolish any homes uh, forcibly because force is usually met with force. And uh, we want, don't want a confrontation, but the City Hall, we hope that at that time that the Congress and people from Washington will be in Charleston, will look at this thing with an open mind and uh, restrain the city from trying to force a confrontation, confrontation issue, which this city cannot afford. About 20 minutes to 11 on Court Street, I, uh, some boys started to rock my car. I got out with by myself, and, um, and then I was about to be attacked about 10 or 20, 10 or 20. 
boys were throwing rocks and I got behind the car, had it pinned for a little bit, and I fired over their head and they scattered. And I got in my car to my radio and my shotgun and uh, called for help. And then immediately after that, we put on curfew and cleared the area. I think that this points up to the fact that there has been an insensitivity in this community on all government levels to the fact that housing is a critical area in this community. There's been a terrible shortages, shortage. Houses have been demolished and destroyed for every type of even supposedly good purpose without replacement. Houses have been taken for urban renewal. Houses have been taken for interstate. Houses have been taken for capital complex. Houses have been taken for office buildings. Houses have been taken for school buildings. All of which may be good and fine, but where has been the regard for these people that have been displaced? And uh, I'm surprised, really, of the, at the patience and the endurance of many of these people. And perhaps this is a warning to this community to get busy and try to provide decent housing for many of its citizens who have now been displaced. Mr. Hobson, why does TIC object to this uh, uh, demolition work? Well, one reason is because uh, the people here have no place to go, and they don't have any homes in this area. So if... Uh, they don't uh, uh, hurry up and start building some homes, and they're going to tear down the homes where the people go. If other areas are considering their own urban renewal plans, what suggestions would you have for the makeup of the original board that implement these? Well, first of all, they should have uh, someone on the board from the community that it's going to affect, and not people from the outside, such as Charleston has done. We would go along with relocation in mobile homes if these mobile homes are located in Edgewood, Kanawha City, South Hills, Chatelon, and Fort Hills, and around the immediate areas where McJunkin, Hemphill, Kelly, and the rest of the urban renewal authorities live. They're always crying about they're out to help the people socially, education-wise, then let these black and poor white families move into your communities and go to school with your kids who live next door to you. But if they're talking about putting it here, then he can take it and ram it. <laughs>